Good everyone, this is Ed, your chess coach. If you want to improve your chess or increase your online chess rating, allow me to be part of your progress. The opening that we will be studying today is one of the unorthodox or uninteresting openings for black. This is called Hippo or Hippopotamus opening where the pawns of black would stay temporarily here on the 6th rank and the minor pieces would just rest here on the 7th rank. It is somewhat timid opening because of the Skyno formation. The standard setup for this opening is not touching the 5th rank. But this is actually a solid one. Difficult to, to break, difficult to penetrate opening. If you are white playing against this kind of opening, it seems like you are facing a huge wall that needs to be what demolished or destroyed. It it is also flexible and um versatile because anytime black could move f5 to attack king side or c5 to attack queen side or break on e5 or d5. Of course, this knight can go f6 or a g6 or f6 or c6 or b6. Of course, it really depends on the uh, white's plan, white strategies. So you really have to adjust. The only challenge for, for this opening is the space. Obviously, like somehow restricted maneuvering for for each pieces. But uh, if you're gonna get used to it, you will definitely enjoy this kind of opening. Especially this is so defensive and solid opening. This is not um, merely defensive opening. You can use this opening to to surprise your opponent that and where to attack. Like you can attack queen side, our oh, queen side. So this is also a surprising opening. It's like, hey, are you <laughs> really serious doing this kind of opening against me? Yes, I am serious. So just guess where would I attack, king side or queen side? I gotta show you a game. One of the games under this opening, if you are ready, come on. Alright, so this game was between Joseph Galanger versus and between Ruslan Ponomaryov, the former FIDE World Chess Champion from 2000 to 2004. So let's begin. E4, G6, modern defense. D4, bishop G7, knight C3, normal development, and D6. This D6 uh, move is very important, especially if black would go knight F6 to avoid the push pawn. Since Ruslan had the idea what to move here, let's say he preferred to move the modern defense and then suddenly he shifted from modern or perk could be perk to um hippo opening and then white would of course less uh, had what less idea to what black would do would he continue doing this modern defense or going to what probably sicilian or whatever that opening um could be possibly for any kind of transposition so since Ruslan had the idea to any time go to hip or continue to move modern defense, this is the advantage of black. So let's continue. Bishop e3, development, a6. So this is um, um, an important move as well to go b5, then later on c5 or b4, a5 to attack queen side if white would go castling queen side. Queen d2. Um, putting pressure on h6 square, knight d7, a4, just to prevent any b5 push pawn. Of course, if black would force this one, capture, capture, and that would be a good buy rook. b6, since um, black cannot go b5, so let's go for b6. And here, the shift of opening happened from modern defense to this opening, hippo, hippo opening, knight f3 okay continuous development improving position bishop c4 targeting the f7 square and it every time you're gonna see the bishop c4 for this setup of course that the main target is this f7 pawn um e6 to avoid to prevent the quick f5 you, you will just capture that one h6 so you, the knight can jump over here and target the center pawns f7 the e6 
knight e7, bishop b7, so double fianchetto for black. Rook e1, since black has a castle here, it's uh, so effective if you have your rook on e1, so that any time uh, the center would open, your rook is ready to, at to attack the king. Um, black cannot castling here yet because the bishop capture h6. That's, that's the reason why Rusan decided to go g5, knight h2, going to knight f1, knight g3, and here knight g6 to cover the h4 and the f f4 square knight f1 knight f6 maneuvering the pieces to its uh, good squares active squares knight g3 and now castling you cannot uh, play this opening without you cast without you doing any kind of castling unless unless your king is safe in the center if not you have to castling king side or queen side bishop d3 since the bishop here is has no lo as it has no job it's like that the job is finished let's go bishop d3 targeting the h7 this long diagonal going to h7 square c5 um black had no way to to find a quick attack here or any any way to break the king side and now let's go queen side let's shift our attack let's shift our weight from king side going to queen side c5 capture and b if you are thinking to capture d takes um that would be a problem for black because the a5 move it will weaken the c5 pawn so um, it's better to capture b takes c5 to maintain the solid position of these center pawns that any time black would um push forward queen c queen c7 once your opponent's rook attack your queen even there's a piece in the middle of it just move your queen to avoid any kind of complication queen e2 d5 targeting to go d4 for a double attack then white captures same thing though well, either bishop or knight um has to move to avoid the fork bishop c1 not bishop d2 you don't want to block your rook. So bishop D c1 is the most sensible uh, move for for white here. Rook e e8 attacking the queen. Capture knight h4. Here. Why knight h4? Because uh, black is planning to move c4. And then bishop takes g6 may, may happen. Or earlier, for example, instead of going rook e8 at attacking the queen why not c5 to c4 because of the bishop takes g6 and ruslan didn't want to have a double pawn on the king side although it op it will open the f file but that is something that ruslan didn't want to have so rook e8 attacking first the the queen after moving knight h4 the target of this h4 is this g2 pawn at the same time the bishop b7 is also putting some pressure on the g2 you only have to do is to move away this pawn and then you have two pieces attacking one pawn rook takes rook rook takes rook um quick exchanges for both sides c4 here and there's no bishop takes knight and the bishop can't go anywhere but to move bishop f1 to protect this g2 because of this coming d4 at the same time, if you're gonna move bishop e2, this knight will have no space to go on knight e2. It will go uh well knight d1 and then any time to capture this g2. Knight e2. If we will check the, the position of white here, it's now it's too tight. It's like grinded because of the limited squares in space for each pieces. The knight cannot go here or here or here. This knight cannot go here, although it's attacking d4, but queen c5 will just Ruslan move here. Um, this queen, where are you gonna get this queen? Queen d2 or queen e, um, queen d1, bishop can only go here. So it's too tight for, for white to move around. Queen c5 just protect the d4, queen e1, and here, knight e4, connecting the bishop to help the queen protecting the d4. Knight takes knight, 
bishop takes knight, knight g3 attacking the bishop, and bishop g6. This is a good understanding of the vision uh, of this position. Why? Are you going to move bishop b7 to keep pressuring the g2? Or are you going to uh, move away going to king side targeting the queen side to help your pawn to move forward? Uh, queen e2, push pawn. This somehow a helping move for 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 white and then capture queen check bishop e3 just queen queen d4 pressuring the g2 at the same time um helping the pawn to to get a new queen bishop d2 blocking the pathway of the pawn bishop takes b2 and here um definitely will give black a huge edge because of the bishop e5 attacking the knight it seems like knight is forced to go e4. Um, can can actually go here, but it's too tight now. So white is trying to to lure away the the white queen. Let's say and then check. If for example white would capture a uh, black would capture here. Of course, there's a queen takes f7. So that is the plan of white here. I gonna give away this pawn. That is the reason why of why knight move on e4, hoping that white a black queen would capture on this uh would capture this pawn but it didn't happen queen check after king h and then queen f2 resigns so if you are black here offering this pawn you don't need to capture because you have your immediate uh self uh what you call it uh, mating net this is a mating net a threat mate i mean all right so uh, white resigns here and cannot cannot do any cannot do anything queen takes bishop if your bishop moves here queen takes pawn checkmate queen cannot capture because of the queen so it's hopeless white resigns so if you enjoy this hip opening simple lesson for this one you may use this one you just try it you just keep using this one over and over again thank you so much for watching don't forget to subscribe and Click also the notification bell. Thank you.